Look at this awful camera angle. Hope I can straighten it out this time. Okay, you had the Citizens United case. And you had the Chief Justice Roberts ruling that the limits on a uh, campaign and amount of candidate can spend and where he gets his campaign money and for what and from corporate America uh, violates the First Amendment. Well, Chief Justice Roberts doesn't believe in the First Amendment any more than the man in the moon. And he was a corporate lawyer before it, but also he represented elected official in a libel suit. Well, uh, elected officials, you can't sue them for libel as a rule uh, because the fact you give that right up when you become elected official because that has to do with democracy and you can't criticize elected official. Well, he, if he he represented an elected official libel suit. He doesn't care about the First Amendment anymore than the man in the moon. And you notice that they care how strong they are about the First Amendment. Well, you notice they don't care about, they don't give any more a hoot in hell about the First Amendment. These Supreme Court, these five people of the Supreme Court that struck down McCain-Feingold, they don't care about the First Amendment. Because you had an example right after that. You had uh, President Obama who said to the Supreme Court, he said, it would be highly erratic for a Supreme Court to strike down a health care law that was approved by both houses of Congress and which it would have been. Well, what happens? These five thugs that are in there, these five, they call them Republicans, these five thugs and Robert Salito and those other three. And one of them came back and said, well, hey, are you trying to intimidate the Supreme Court? And I'm thinking, oh, wait a second. Was it them that said they supported the First Amendment and how important it was in the Citizens United case? And all of a sudden, they're not only saying that the people don't have a right to the First Amendment, the Dixie Chicks don't have a right to the First Amendment, they're saying the President doesn't even have the right to the First Amendment. These same five thugs are saying the Dixie Chicks, even when they're overseas, not only do they not have the right to the First Amendment in the U.S., they don't even have the right to it overseas. They don't believe in the first man anymore than a man on the moon. And there's several other things. And you take the hard right ideology, which is the basically the new ideology. And you have, well, a Dixie Chicks example, a good example of people trying to shut down the Dixie Chicks. You take this, they had a, in the communist Russia, when the Bolshevik party took over, they had a, someone put on a puppet show. And this was before the Bolsheviks got their power. They weren't totally in power at this point, the way I understand it. Uh, someone put on a puppet show and they got the crowd to laugh at the Bolshevik party. I mean, it was like, you know, it was like they do over here when they knock Reagan or whoever, like the comedians like David Letterman, when he criticizes somebody, gets a big laugh, like Cheney or whatever. He doesn't like the Republicans, so they get a big laugh without what a big fool they are. Well, they had someone in the, out in the crowd with a gun who shot everyone that laughed. Well, what did this do? This created fear, and that's how the Bolsheviks got their power. You got the same thing with the Dixie Chicks, basically. They get on the radio, what happens? They shove them off the radio. Because, see, because the Republican Party put this law through that one man owns 42 radio stations. He gets three calls and complaining about them. He shoves them off. What does that do? They aren't on the radio at all. So we got Radio Moscow because it, one man owns all these radio stations. Who put that through? It's those same five thugs in their ideology. It's not them, but they have that Republican communist ideology uh, going on, when, which says that you know they sign bills to shut people up. And so what does that mean? The Dixie Chicks aren't going to talk anymore, and neither is anyone else. And that's just exactly like the Bolshevik Party in, in Russia. And it shows exactly how our country's turned communist. And you have, um, they, they're the first ones, the first ones to argue that McCain fine gold violates the first amendment is the first one to shut up the Dixie Chicks. It's the first one to basically support the ideal of the Bolshevik party in Russia. It's the first one to kick Ross Perot out of the presidential debate. It's the first one to support a veggie libel law that says you can't criticize the beef industry, which Oprah Winfrey was fighting. And that's those same darn Republicans. The hard right is a hard right ideal. It's not a moderate, it's not centrist. It's the hard, it's not even a moderate right, it's the hard right, basically. And it was close to periphery. And basically, my opinion is the centrists, they argue, Dennis Prager will argue that uh, basically the right and the left are dogmatic. His, his view is, he, he basically he argues the left is dogmatic because they say uh, corporations are evil, which is a dogmatic belief, and I agree with him on that. The corporate, that saying the corporations are evil are dogmatic, but he also admitted that Pat Robertson is dogmatic. So in my opinion, the, the more the far the dogmatic belief has to, is a function of education, which means that is y equal m over x, as y increases, x decreases. Education increases, dogmatic belief decreases. And so if you're on this far right or the periphery,
on the far right or far left, you're more dogmatic. You have the dogmatic people, Pat Robertson's on the right, and you have the people that think the body is your temple and you know other stuff that are non-philosophical that are on the left. In my opinion, the more, and he argues that the, the right protects you from communism. I, my argument is that the, peri the centrist protects you from communism. On either side of the periphery, closer you are to the periphery, the more apt to be, turn communist. And, uh, and these people in the Supreme Court are the hard right. And I would say the same thing on the hard left. I don't have a bias against um, either party. I have a bias against the periphery. I consider myself a centrist. Okay. Rastation uh, Radio took they, yeah, Constellation Radio, they took over forty two radio stations and knocked the Dixie Chicks off. To me that's Radio Moscow. And like I say, which has to comes all back to Nader and is running against uh, Al Gore. But it's where in my opinion that's how it all started. Okay, Ornstein's back, let's do that later. Did I get my face in it this time? I hope. Yeah. Ooh, it's still going.